this is probably the last time you'll see this bike in this form since um, it's pretty well worn out switching over to fuel injected bike here uh, to continue my lc8 adventures but lots of memories with this bike uh, it was my first dirt bike uh, traveled extensively on it learned a lot about working on bikes um, on this bike and uh, I don't know I don't know exactly what its future is yet um, but it's currently more economical to buy another one than it is to uh, actually rebuild a 950 engine so uh, I guess we'll pretty much start at the front of it um, the thing looks a little bit different than than what you would normally see on an adventure bike um, I guess we'll I don't know there's there's so many things so starting at the front wheel uh woody's wheel works uh 21 inch 21 by 1.85 excel rim it's not an a60 uh, if i do it again i'd probably would go to an a60 i've got a pretty good bend in it right here um but this thing's held up great uh, never had any spokes come loose or come out of true or anything even with all the all the hits it's taken um got the rad hub on there it's a single front brake um, i just took the caliper and the rotor off on this side it does have a super enduro brake master uh, to get the hydraulic ratio correct um, you do have to run pretty aggressive brake pads in order to deal with stopping a big heavy bike like this um, i run the ebc double h they're like a i think they're a sport bike pad actually um, but they work pretty well on this you got to get a little heat into them um, before they work really well uh, but that's not hard to do on a big heavy bike um, suspension is conflict motorsports 265 millimeter it's pretty stiff um, set up more for aggressive riding than for comfort uh, so springs are uh, 0.69 kilogram per millimeter or newton per millimeter i don't know exactly what the units are um, been revalved a few times and different pistons and different things in them to, to make them work well uh, super enduro pistons so uh, they're they're pretty good uh, still getting them dialed in suspension's a tough one everybody's got got their preference but certainly it's uh not what slows me down on this bike anymore uh high fender i think it is a an smc fender 690 smc um, I'd have to go back and look. I actually bought it from a guy basically as like a, a swap meet part. Um, so I don't know exactly what it's off of. Um, the front end of the bike, it's a stock windscreen with like three inches cut off the top. Uh, I went through a bunch of different windshields, including like the Raid Garage one that everybody uses. Never really was happy with them. That's one of the big problems with these bikes. So I made these little... Um, they're just strapping steel. This was supposed to be just a test to see if it works. Uh, and then I just never end up, ended up making an aluminum version. Um, but just to tilt the windshield forward and to give me a little bit of an air gap so you get some airflow around the dashboard um, so that you get rid of that turbulent layer. Uh, it doesn't protect you from wind very well. It does keep the rain off of you, uh, but there's no turbulence anymore. So that's, that's really nice. Um, LEDs on the front. I kept breaking stock headlights, which got really old and the stock headlights aren't very good to start with, uh, just from a lighting perspective. So it's a, a PIA RF3 cube on the top and two rigid industries spots on the bottom. I've, I'll probably go with something a little bit different in the next iteration of this. Um, the P is a decent low beam, but it's not really a low beam. Uh, I don't ride at night, so not a huge deal, but it's still pretty bright if you're on the street. Uh, turn signals are gone. I kept breaking them. Um, kind of gets old replacing those too. I had the, the really flexible spring-loaded Enduro ones on there the unbreakable ones, and I broke both of them. Uh, the lenses came off of them. So I ended up going to these little LEDs uh, that are, I think, intended for side-by-sides or something. Um, I'll actually, just to give an idea of what those look like. So it's, you know, not super bright, but it's bright enough to see it. Um, I've actually got the same thing in the back. 
uh, for the same reason. Try to keep things light and simple. So um, that is turn signals. The, let's see, well, the next step back, really the tower is kind of the big thing. These normally have a big aluminum deal up here with a bunch of wires and relays and all that stuff. Uh, it's, it works very well for an adventure bike. The aluminum cannot handle holding a lot of weight. And I had put a road book holder on the top of the dashboard and I actually broke it just from the fatigue. Uh, it, it damaged the aluminum, it just it cracked all the welds, and the whole thing just got really wobbly, in addition to being somewhat bent from previous crashes. Um, so this is actually an idea I took from the Highway Dirt Bikes uh, Rally Light fairing that they make, uh, that I have on my 450. Uh, so this is, it's just two pieces of uh, high density polyethylene, I think is what it was. Um, just thick plastic which I shaped and you know cut out I I think I did it with a jigsaw and then I did the final grinding with like a die grinder and some deburring bits uh, really easy stuff to work with uh, made it out of cardboard first then out of plastic um, it's very very sturdy I mean this thing is like it can take a hit and it just kind of bends back to where it started from the thing that I really wanted out of it was to be able to use all the stock plastics. A lot of the other kits out there, the Aurora kit, uh, I don't know if Rebel X or anybody else makes them, but I know there's others. Um, they all have custom stuff, and if you crash and break something uh, or break the plastics, you're kind of stuck, where the factory plastics seem to be very durable, and you, know, you can always buy used ones. Uh, the tower mounts to the same, the original factory location on the steering head. Um, all the wiring is either, um, it's either tucked in the frame uh, near where the airbox used to be, or it's still there, and it's just in between the two side plates. I do not have the original controls on this bike anymore, uh, original gauges, um, so the tack and the speedo are gone. Uh, I have a Trail Tech Voyager Pro on here, it's a great unit. Um, I will turn it on here. I know some people have a problem with these just because they don't do turn-by-turn -turn navigation, but they do a lot of other stuff, and so that's why it's a good fit here. Um, I'll let the thing get caught up for a second. Um, when it starts up, it, it lags a little normally. It's very, very fast. Um, so this is really what I use it for. Um, in addition to my speed and the tack you saw on the previous screen, it's got coolant temperature, it's got your usual you know, trip meter, it's got battery voltage, um, it's, it's got everything you need to keep track of one of these. It does everything the stock gauges do in addition to having your usual you know, GPS. Um, yeah, so 91,925 miles on this. Um, GPS, so you can see where you're going, you can do tracks. Um, a lot of this stuff is very customizable. So this is their aluminum um, billet mount for it. And then neutral light, the turn signal light, of course, and the fuel light. Uh, the fuel light is resistive on these. You have to use the incandescent bulb um, to generate enough current to heat up the element in the tank for it to actually work. Um, but that fuel light does work. Um, so it, it, it keeps the stock functionality. It doesn't have the hysteresis of the stock one, so it comes on and off around uh, a gallon, 1.2 gallons remaining, and then it's on pretty steady around a gallon remaining, just like stock. Um, you'll see there's no oil pressure light here. My oil pressure light is this very, very bright LED. It's actually the same as the turn signals. Um, and the idea there is just, I, if I have low oil pressure, I want to know I have low oil pressure, um, and it's hard to miss that. The bike did have heated grips on it at one point. It doesn't nap. The switch is still there. Uh, and then the choke lever I've moved um, onto the tower, get it off the bars. I broke um, the stock cover and all that stuff, which is why I got the blingy bit in there. Um, this is actually the clutch cover um, just mounted to the tower. Um, and then in addition to all that, tucked in here, there's a USB charger, so I've got a couple USB ports for charging phones and whatnot. 
uh, Garmin Montana 600 mounts on there right now from the last adventure. Um, I do also have a 12 volt connector on the top so I can make a harness to whatever I, I want to mount up there. Um, and then, you know, another ram ball if I want it. I have another plate that I made, again, to mount uh, a rally nav book uh, up here, a uh, road book holder, and also a bracket that has the larger size ram ball on it uh, if I want to use that. So very, very flexible. Um, this tower, I'll either take this tower off and use it on the new bike, uh, or I'll just make another one. Um, this is just an aluminum bracket here that uh, mounts the lights and mounts to the, the factory fairings. So uh, all the factory fairing mounts are used, except they're not supported at the top. So it's a little flexible, but in reality, it doesn't make any difference at all, at least not that I've found. Uh, you can see I have trimmed everything out of the inside of these, even the, the mounting bosses that were in there, so all the plastic is gone, and then I've reshaped these to try to make them look a little bit more natural. Uh, since it's a black bike, it works pretty well. Um, all that is also extra airflow. You don't really get wet in the rain, uh, but it's I'm sure it's not as good as a stock one in, in terms of weather protection. Um, I do still have the, the stock key switch and ignition lock on there. I uh, still ride the bike on the street. Security's nice. Um, let's see, next thing. Triple clamp moto, steering damper on it, along with the aluminum inserts to keep the bars from moving. It's a, it's a good setup. I like that it's simple and uses the stock parts. I like that it doesn't raise the bars too much. Um, what I don't like is you can see there's an angle of the uh, damper pin relative to the damper itself. And I, I don't care for that because it moves, it twists on there because it's not actually rotating on the same axis. And this one doesn't have a lot of time on it. It's already squeaking. So uh, I'm gonna take that off and figure it out. I think the people who use these really need to be careful uh, to make sure they stay lubricated or you're going to have some problems. Um, let's see. Bars are uh, Renthal fat bars. They are the RC high bend. Um, that was good before I had the steering damper and I'm still not convinced this bike really needs a steering damper. It's just there for safety. Um, I actually have the low speed damping turned down as far as it'll go and it's just the high speed damping so if i smack something uh, at speed it, it saves me a little bit um, these bars are too high when being used in conjunction with that steering damper um, it yeah they're just too high i need to go down about a, a half inch at least double take mirrors they're the best mirrors um, they've taken a lot of hits been through a lot you can see they're really chewed up um, but they, they keep on kicking. I do wish that you could get an aluminum ram ball. That's probably something the aftermarket has. Uh, I just, I haven't really looked. Um, Enduro Engineering hand guards, they're just hand guards. I do have the ODI lock on grips on here. Um, they're the same grips I use on my dirt bikes, so all the bikes feel the same. That's kind of one of my goals has been to make all of these bikes feel as close to similar as possible. Uh, stock throttle housing. However, the lock-on grips use a different throttle cam, um, so I have modified the inside of this a little bit, opened it up to take the, the larger diameter. There's just a little bit of clearance you have to do in there, and then it works great. Nice and snappy throttle. It's also a quick-turn throttle. Um, the 950s are not as snappy as the injected bikes. Um, I like the quick turn uh, to be able to get to that power a little bit more quickly for uh, jumping over stuff and whatnot. Uh, this bike does primarily get used uh, in the dirt. Uh, switches, I think, are the last... Oh, actually, there's two other things up here. So, turn signal switch is actually just an eBay crappy uh, three-position switch. Uh, the smallest, most compact thing I could find. All the other functions are done over here by the factory Euro switch. Um, so you've got your headlight. The, the way the lights are set up is um, off, low beam, high beam. Um, so that way I don't have to have a separate high beam switch. It just simplifies everything. And it actually simplifies the wiring quite a bit too. Uh, cut a bunch of extra stuff out. 
the last remaining little trick up this thing's sleeve is I have converted this thing away from the Magura parts. Um, so now it uses the more modern Brembo uh, master cylinder along with um, the Oberon uh, clutch slave so I can use brake fluid with it. In addition to that, um, this is a nine millimeter diameter clutch master, so it lightens the clutch quite a bit. I mean, it's it's very, very light and easy to use. So uh, that was a big improvement when combined with that clutch master. And now I don't have to worry about the whole mineral oil thing should something happen on the road. Um, so I think that's everything up on the bars. Uh, like I said, this is a super enduro master cylinder, um, so it is smaller than the um, the stock Adventure Master um, so that it works properly with the single brake caliper. Uh, moving on back a little bit into the glove box. Got all my, my paperwork in here. I do have another uh, USB charger in there uh, so I can charge stuff in the glove box. The on off switch is the crappy fuel switch. Um, so that lets me uh, switch to the low octane mode without trying to plug something in and remembering to do that so I just turn that off and on um, I had other stuff in here you can see this holes I've, I've patched up and then it does have the uh, quick release um, the Rottweiler setup in there that is awesome uh, the only problem that I have with the Rottweiler setup is that quick release those Zeus uh, quarter turns are spring loaded and the front of the seat uses the glove box to retain it so if you get in a situation where you have an old Renazco seat like this um, the cover tightens over time and if you like seat bounce over something it kind of flexes the seat if you do this hard enough it actually lifts the glove box up and it'll pop it'll pop the front of that open um, with the stock set up with screws retaining it it won't do that um, but I, so I loosened the cover on this. I took all the staples out and restapled it. Um, and it's been fine ever since doing that. Um, but really, you can see this is quite worn. I just, I need a new one. Um, and I'll go right back to, to Renasco for that. It's a great seat. So let's see, we'll work our way down and stay kind of at the front here. Uh, still running the stock radiator guard. Um, I have broken three radiators on this bike. Uh, the oil tank hangs from the radiator and it fails right at the top, right below these mounts. Um, I have not found a good way around that. Um, eventually I would like to make a new oil tank that doesn't hang from the radiator to fix that problem. Um, but still the plastic piece here, it works plenty well. I don't like the aluminum mesh ones that people like to put on these. Uh, no crash bars, you can see I had them at one point um, with the studs that are on here. Uh, they're too heavy, they're too wide. These bikes crash just fine without them. Um, I do have the 990 tank guards on here that have been cut and modified to fit on a 950. Uh, this is the best solution I've found. Uh, they hold up really well. They take a hit. They're like $11 if you uh, break one or wear through it because you slid on your side. Um, actually, this reminds me. <laughs> brake line. Um, I've been doing the rally brake line setup on the 450 and also on this bike because when the front wheel travels, it flexes at this point right here instead of uh, running a motocross style up and down. Um, I had issues with the stock brake line on the 950 that does follow that path. Um, it was getting caught on things on the handlebars, so you'd like you'd go through a G out and the front wheel would drop back down and it would like rip your GPS off. Um, so this takes care of that. So less stuff moving around on you at the top. Let's see, I think that's everything up there. Still stock head pipes and all that stuff. Uh, I still run a lead acid battery. Um, I did uh, red Loctite the battery leads and also uh, packed the battery box with uh, like pieces of foam. I was having issues with the battery bouncing around and the cables coming loose, which you really don't want that in the middle of nowhere or in a bad situation or during a race. Um, that's just a, a dumb thing to take you out, really frustrating. So hasn't had a problem since I started using red Loctite on the battery.
Uh, skid plate, Black Dog Cycle Works. It's the best one out there for these in terms of durability. Uh, you can see I've cut some holes in this one just for uh, weight reduction mainly. Um, and it, I guess it looks cool, but uh, it, it works uh, really, really well. It's done its job great. It is bent slightly. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. If you make them too strong, you're going to bend something else. So I don't fault them for it bending a little bit uh, when a you know, 450, 500 pound bike comes slamming down on a skid plate. Uh, it's just what's going to happen. Uh, I do have two fans. Uh, I don't remember what kit this is, uh, but it is uh, wired up to the other one so they come on at the same time. I do have the low temperature fan switch on it so they come on a little bit early. Um, I have only done three water pumps on this bike in, in the time that, that I've had it. I actually take that back, two water pumps. Um, there was a lot of casting sand in this one. Um, so flushing out all the passages uh, made a huge difference in terms of uh, the life that I've gotten out of those. The, this one's been in there for, or the last one was in there for like almost 35,000 miles, I think. Uh, and, and it wasn't even leaking when I replaced it. I just did it because I was worried. Um, other stuff down here, you can see uh, this is a 2005 and a half, so it has the longer heat shield, which is good, but it makes it a bear to get that head pipe out. So I did cut the heat shield back here. That lets me get this out without, you know, taking the whole side of the engine part or something. Uh, it's just enough clearance so you can snake it out. These also, um, the 950s don't have a positive up stop for the brake lever. Um, they were held in place with the circlip and the brake master, uh, which fell out on this bike just like they all do in a crash. It got torn out. Um, so this is the 990. When you can see the first hole I drilled was in the wrong place. I did move it. Um, works great. It's been that way for a long time. Uh, and it's nice to have that adjustability. It actually looks like it's uh, migrated up a little bit from where I normally have it. Um... KTM rally pegs. These are the best pegs for these things, in my opinion. The extra width is nice because the bike's so wide. Uh, it just gives you a little extra purchase. Like everyone else, I lost the sight glass on the master cylinder. Um, so there's a penny that's JB welded in there, and then a plate that's JB welded over that. And then I have this stainless steel cover I made that actually puts pressure on the side of this as well. And that just makes sure that it can't go anywhere. I have a hunch that JB Weld and brake fluid don't get along very well. Um, it's not leaking yet, but I don't trust it. Hence the, the extra little bit of security there. Um, at one point I did bend this whole thing in, in a crash and it was rubbing on the swing arm. Um, so a little bit of a bummer there, but I just bent it back out. The swing arm's been fine. You'll see there is no center stand on this bike. It was very annoying and clanging around and my feet were hitting it. Uh, so I took it off. I actually bent it, not in a crash, just it hit a rock or something. And uh, it collapsed the tube on it and that was kind of the last straw. Um, so I carry this leg up thing uh, that I can get the wheels off the ground to do tire changes and stuff. I have broken the foot pegs off of this frame and welded them back on. That's the downside of the rally pegs. Um, but also I think the frame is just a little sacked out at this point. Um, it has been through a lot. The clutch was original until like 80 something thousand miles and I put new fibers in it. It was notched pretty bad. I have the CJ Designs billet clutch basket in there which will be uh, moved to the new bike uh, when the time comes for that. Um, the exhaust is 2 to 1 Rottweiler with the uh, R77 Yoshimura or maybe it's the RS4, I can't remember, it's the older one. Um, I do have the spark arrestor in it. These bikes are so freaking loud without it. Um, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, the bike sounds great to me, uh, even with the spark arrestor. And yes, there is a performance impact. It's not quite as strong over like 7,500 RPM, 8,000 RPM. Um, but these bikes make plenty of power. Too much for the dirt anyway. Um, so, I, you know, it's, I'd rather have a quieter bike that doesn't give me a headache. 
and doesn't make everyone around me hate motorcycles. Um, the tailplate's on there with the, the Rotopax mount just because the last thing I did was an adventure ride. I put a, a 1.75 gallon, or it's actually the one gallon uh, water tank up there, um, and then strap a bag on top of that. I've had a lot of problems with the brake light burning out lights, so I have this um, rally LED light up here. It's only wired up to the brake light, so the brake light turns that on for a little bit of extra visibility. Um, the brake light also tends to fill up with sand and dust, so you know, the LED is just a nice backup since uh, I, I know you can't always see the, the main light. Um, stock Hepco Becker bars uh, for the um, the bags, which I run the Kriega Overlander 60 setup on for traveling. Uh, those come off most of the time. Um, they're pretty easy to get on and off. Let's see, what else? Um, stock swing arm and all that stuff. I don't have an SE swing arm, but I would love to have one. Um, shock again 265 millimeter travel it has a 135 newton meter or a newton per millimeter spring on it um, i keep going lighter on the spring because the bike is lighter than stock um, and i'm not a super heavy guy so uh, the the 140 is about right the 150 was way too stiff uh, that that came factory on this so it's a little bit on the soggy side if you don't have luggage on it um, but i don't ride with luggage all that much and when i do i'm not going as fast so um, i just deal with it uh, i can't have everything it's all a compromise <laughs> Um, I have broken the axle block before, so this is the CJ Designs billet uh, axle adjuster block. Um, brakes, again, I run the EBC double H pads so that everything can get uh, nice and hot and still work and not disintegrate my brake pads. Um, regular fluid changes are key on these bikes to keep it from boiling. The rear wheel is also a Woody's Wheel Works. Uh, this is an Excel A60. I had a problem where I actually cracked one of the uh, Excel 3.5 inch wide rims. This is a 2.15. Uh, it's a true dirt bike size. Um, so I said if I was breaking that one, I needed to get an A60 um, or, you know, otherwise I'm just gonna bend something else, which, I, you know, heavy bike like this, I totally believe it. And this thing has been bulletproof. Slam it into anything, it's been fine. Um, tires, I guess now's a good time to talk about that. My normal setup for adventure is what you see here, which is the Pirelli Scorpion Rally in the front. And that tire is toast. And on the back, the Moto's Tractionator. Um, it's a Desert HT. It's a loud, annoying tire. Uh, but it does well and it wears okay. If it's a longer adventure, I'll put the whatever their adventure tire is. I forget the name of it on there, but I, I really like the uh, Motaz tires for, for this bike. Um, for real dirt stuff, it's a, a Motaz Tractionator IT in the back and the front, a Golden Tire Fatty uh, GT216 AA in the front. Um, that's kind of the, the combo I've been happiest with there. Uh, coming around to the other side, uh, you can see that uh, Oberon clutch slave uh, with a little protector there. A uh, guy on Adventure Rider came up with those. It's a great idea. Um, I have done the torque limiter on the starter on this thing, which is the TSB uh, course by now, right? Uh, I have updated the regulator rectifier. It's an FH020AA. Um, the next bike will get one of the SH847 series regulator rectifiers on it to try to keep the oil a little bit cooler. Uh, I just never did it on this bike. It never really needed it. Uh, the fuel pump has uh, the Dr. Bean kit on it. It's been going strong for what 40 plus thousand miles it's the original fuel pump hardware uh, so that's been you know rock solid for me um, what you're seeing right here is a connector to the rear fuel tank um, gearing one of those things everybody talks about i normally run 1645 for this adventure it's a 1745 uh, because i don't need to put a different chain on it um, i can just swap out that front sprocket 
the kickstand again everybody does different things with these you can see i've had to make mine longer uh, no matter how many times i repaint this thing it just gets trashed again um, and of course the boot rubbing on the frame polishes everything nicely um, this is the cj designs side stand relocation bracket and I bent it pretty badly. Um, normally the side stand is, is kind of down here with it um, and it bolts on to this bolt and then it bolts on underneath. Um, I just welded it to the frame after I bent it and it's been fine ever since. Uh, I think for the next bike all this stuff is going to go away and I'll, I'll do the aluminum thing. Um, it, put a side stand like an enduro side stand on it from from trail tech that should work a lot better and be lighter uh, this thing hangs down on it and see i rub it on everything and i want to get away from that also my foot tends to sit on top of all this stuff i don't like being able to feel that um my boot rubs on the preload adjuster there so that's all nasty looking uh, this is the Naduro um, from Ned Seuss, uh, I think was the guy who made these. Uh, it's like a two-point-ish, 2.1 something tank. Um, it works great. I've never had a problem with it. I know people say they've bent them and stuff and they swing around. This one's been rock solid, so I don't know what they're talking about. Um, shovel. <laughs> I, that's probably something that won't make it to the next bike. Uh, I need it less frequently than I would have thought uh, for the adventure riding stuff, and it's pretty heavy. Um, that was kind of an addition before I started going on this lightweight uh, make everything race bike kind of kick. Um, like I said about the swing arm, it is still a stock swing arm and it doesn't have the chain guide or anything. I would love to get one with a chain guide. Uh, I just haven't found one for sale yet. Uh, or maybe I'll have one welded up and uh, add it myself. So, something to come there. We'll see. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's the engine is all stock. No like weird CDI stuff. No magic in there. You just change the oil all the time. And so, seats off now, and you can see my storage setup in here. Uh, the 990s have an opening here for more stuff, which I'll put to good use. Um, that's one thing I was meant to change on this. Um, but I did add kind of my own storage here. So this is something that um, I had made up for extra storage in the back. It actually does just barely clear the rear tire. If I look under here, you can see that the when the tire was fresh it was just hitting that uh, eventually yeah it'll you know do some damage to it but it's been like that for a long time and have had no problems um, and honestly that because of that front sprocket the axles reel forward uh, I, I actually think it would move back and away from that. Now you can see the tire was also rubbing up here, uh, about to rub its way right through the fender. So um, just the oversized tire plus the axle being way forward on there. Uh, intake is triple clamp moto. Uh, had the Rottweiler one on it. I had issues with the filters disintegrating. Uh, I think it was a problem with the combination of heat and maybe the filter oil I was using. Um, crankcase breather this thing's tired so it's a little more oily than you'd hope um, but the engine itself is pretty leak free uh, you can kind of see it looks dirty it's because the bike has tipped over recently and it's you know, gas makes stuff stick to it um, and then I've got a you know tube and a air pump and some other stuff in there just factory storage stuff um, the frame is reinforced here and here uh, at one point I broke the subframe off and instead of breaking the subframe it actually ripped the tabs off the frame um, So I had to have those welded back on and then just made them stronger with that. So um, That was exciting when that happened. It's been fine ever since and that was 20 something thousand miles ago um, Tire irons get stored right there. There's just a couple zip ties um, so you have to cut a zip tie to get there, but uh, that way they're out of the way. The idea was have all the tools on the bike and not in luggage, so they're always there. Uh, one of the great things about these is all the storage space. So I think 
that's basically everything. Um, I did shorten the rear fender. You can see there's no light on the back anymore. Um, I was having some issues with the fender touching the tire. Um, this cleans it up and keeps it up a little bit higher um, and probably saves, you know, a quarter of a pound or something. Um, wasn't really done for that purpose, but it's, it's neater and it's out of the way. Um, otherwise, it's just another 950. Um, kind of been through everything on it a few times except for the engine. It's been super durable for me and uh, never really let me down until this last trip, which is uh, just because it's worn out. It just wouldn't start at altitude and was always a, you know, got to get it bump started or flood it by accident and all that stuff. Um, and of course, the wiring, I think, is probably the last thing. I have cleaned the wiring up in this to a uh, a pretty high degree basically pulling the harness out of the bike and all the extra wires so clutch switch neutral switch um, all the EPC stuff the canister purge stuff um, that stuff's not just unplugged it doesn't even exist anymore it's gone out of the harness all the way back to the CDI box um, or whatever relay was controlling it so um, does it reduce weight? Yeah, but really it's just the simplicity of not having all that stuff hanging around, bouncing around. It just cleans everything up real nice. Um, really good for troubleshooting too. So yeah, that's a 950. Been a great bike and I'm not quite sure what the future holds for it, um, but there will definitely be more LC8 adventures in the future uh, on the 990. So. Uh, and hopefully we can get the 990 looking like this one. I like the simple black, um, you know, simple black look. 412 is from the KTM Ultimate Race thing, and then reused that number for the Mint 400, uh, and then just never took the numbers off. So, so yeah, that's that. Um, I guess the last thing, statistic-wise, um, before the low compression, I was getting 30-ish miles a gallon off-road, and low 40s on road if i was just cruising um the mint 400 i burned five and a half gallons of gas per lap which was about a 90 mile lap um, the whoops were terrible and as part of why i moved to fuel injection um, i've done a lot of work to the carbs to try to make them work in the whoops and there's just even with lowering the fuel pressure and other things it's still not what I would hope it would be. Uh, so hopefully I can tune the fuel injection to, to work a little better for that. Um, weight wise, the bike weighed in at 480-ish pounds wet. I think it's 485 wet. So tanks were full um, and the full tool kit on it. Uh, and it had mooses in the tires, which are real heavy, uh, but no luggage and the racks were off of it. Um, so compared to a 790, which I'd call the current benchmark, which is 461 pounds when I weighed one of those, uh, this is still a little bit heavier. Um, there's some opportunity in the battery and some other things, um, but, you know, fairly light bike. Hopefully I can get the 990 into the same or, or even better ballpark. Uh, and that weight is actually slightly rear biased. You'd never guess with those giant tanks. Um, but it's a couple more pounds in the back than it is in the front. Um, you can see I've cut a lot out of the front of this bike and it, you know, it made a big difference. So that's a walk around to the 950. Um, it'll kind of be cool to remember this bike this way. Uh, and also I know a few people have been asking for it. So, uh, that's kind of all the tips and tricks. There's, uh, not too many secrets here to, here to show just... A lot of fun and a few hours in the garage.